To the left, right? Yep. I got it, and there's the boss. Here, play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. Hello, this is Dave from Retired Time Productions, and I'm back with Jim today. And we're working with the uh, Wakera QRX350 Premium Quadcopter. And we're just studying it, learning about some new things. And this time we're going to be doing a, a tutorial on charging the battery and then some of the calibration steps and arming the motors and such like that. So let's get started. So something new we discovered about the radio, it actually has an AV port on the bottom. So there's two jacks on the bottom here for the audio video feed and this is for hooking up goggles or maybe a monitor or a digital video recorder perhaps. So that is something new we discovered. So when we first got our quad we needed to charge the battery and uh, this is the battery here it's eight cells so uh, we need to get it on the charger so let's look at the charger. To use the charger plug in the AC cord into the outlet the cell lights will blink once and the charge status light blinks continually. Now take the charge cable, plug it into the plus and minus terminals on the charger. Plug the other end of the cable into the battery, observing the plus and minus polarity for the plug. Now take the balance cable, plug it in the charger, and plug it in the battery. It's keyed so you can't get it wrong. Now this next part is not in the manual, so you might want to pay close attention to this. You have to turn on the battery and then hold the button for several seconds until the green lights come on. At this point the lights will come on solid for the cells and the charge status light will be on solid red. The battery is now charging at this point and it may take 45 minutes or more for the battery to charge. During the process some of the cell lights might blink. This is normal. This is part of the balancing process and the cell is being discharged. Once all of the charging is done, the cell lights will go out and the charge status light will be on solid green. You are now done and you can turn off the battery, turn off the charger, and disconnect all the cables. So when we first tried to bind the quadcopter, we turned the radio on first and then turned on the quadcopter and it wouldn't bind. We then tried another operation where we cleaned the IDs out of the uh, receiver module. So we did a clean up SW by holding a toothpick onto this tiny button right here. And then after holding that button, keep it on and turn on the quad here with a switch and hold the button in until the battery comes on. Green lights. And then you you wait a few seconds for the light to blink for a while and then just turn the quad back off. And that's supposed to clean any IDs, any transmitter IDs. And don't let go of the button until you turn it off. Okay, you also have to make sure the fixed ID is turned off and we're going to show you how to do that. First we're going to go into the main menu and then go to model menu and then go down to fixed ID, enter that, and make sure the status here is off. If it's on, just toggle it off. So to bind the uh, 350 Premium, we found out that uh, some of them bind with the radio on first and then the quadcopter, and some you have to turn the quadcopter on first and then the radio, and it's hard to know which one. Now we found this out from a, a man on RC groups who was very helpful and told us that there was quite a bit of uh, deviation between the different quadcopters and the way they bind and even within the same model. He had some of the same model, some bound one way and some the other way. So you just can't really know. You just have to try both ways. Okay, so uh, when you do begin the bind process, once you turn the quadcopter on, you only have 10 seconds to actually uh, turn the radio on and start the binding. But before you do, the first thing we have to do is make sure all of the sticks are in their zero positions and all the switches are in their zero positions. And also the trims. The trims have to be in zero. Otherwise the camera gimbal will go crazy. Okay, so now I'm going to turn on the quadcopter. 
turn the switch on first and then hold the smart power button until the lights turn green and then you can let go the red light should start blinking rapidly like that okay now you can turn on the radio and wait for the bind process now while that's going on you'll see some of the status lights here as it goes through with self checks come on so right now it's uh it's got a green light here for receiving and now this for the compass is on and then we'll wait for the other two red light is still blinking at this point this takes a little bit of time okay there goes the GPS now it's going to self check the last one waiting for that there it is so the barometer is good so now all are good and the red light stopped blinking so now it should be possible to unlock by moving the stick to the left and you can see the red light flashed a little bit and now it's gone solid red okay now we can probably run the motors so there's some motors so once you're done flying then you can go ahead and lock the motors again by moving the stick to the right so that's it we got the binding process done finally after some struggle throttle no longer works at this point alright we're gonna do the calibration so the first thing we're gonna do is turn on the battery turn on the switch and hold the button until the green lights come on okay wait for the motors to beep twice and then turn on the radio within 10 seconds that's basically the same thing you do when you're binding too now we're just waiting for the uh, initialization where it goes through all its self checks so that we get all uh, five lights on here yeah the radio just made another beep that's just it coming on so we're waiting for the five lights to come on and while it's doing that I just want to discuss it it wouldn't actually go into the calibration mode when we first did it so we actually had to go ahead and move this stick to the left and that unlocks the motors and then we went back to the right and locked them again but they do have to be in lock to do the calibration for some reason the first time we did it we had to go through that process after that we didn't okay we got all our lights now and we can begin the calibration move the sticks into the middle and down okay the red light starts blinking one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four and now the light has gone out so it means the calibration process is done as far as we know but this is our first uh, attempt at calibrating so you guys can let us know what else might not be right you know we don't know for sure but at least it worked okay so before you can go ahead and fly the quad though after you're done calibrating you need to shut everything off and then restart the quadcopter in other words we rebind okay so now that we can start over and we should be able to run the motors when we're done okay we went through the binding process again in other words we shut it off and then rebound after the calibration was done and now the motors can be run by unlocking them so not running yet no. you have to unlock them and now we're ready to go so if you uh, don't move the throttle and there's no activity after about 10 seconds or so uh, the motors will go back into lock mode so now it won't spin anymore and to unlock it you have to move the stick back over and hold it down and then you can run again so the manual indicates how many satellites you got per blink but basically it's the number five plus the number of blinks so if we have six blinks you can add five to that it means we have 11 satellites and I think that's because of the dual GPS that this has 
where it picks up both American and Russian satellites. Okay, that about wraps it up for this video. I know you're probably hoping for some flight video, but we just didn't have time to get out to the flying field and set everything up and do it today, but we will get to that. And uh, in the next video, not only will we show some flight video, but uh, we want to go over how to set up the tablet. We've got this holder here that we got from Wakara that uh, will hold the tablet, and then we have the Bluetooth uh, radio here that will set up so that we can uh, look at the mission planner uh, while we fly the quadcopter. So that's coming up next, but for now I hope this was helpful and you learned something about the quadcopter. I know we did, because there was a lot of glitches. The manual just didn't cover everything we needed to know, and we had to rely a lot on RC groups. And we want to thank everybody that helped us on RC groups, and uh, I don't think we would have got to where we are now if we didn't have that help, because this is one enigma. But we're getting going now, so we'll see you next time. Keep your